Hey guys, welcome back to Development. Today we're going to be marking a new bike trail, and it's a little ways away, and it's getting dark. So I'll just show you really quick. As you can see, I have a nice light here for when it gets dark. I also have one on my head. And then I have this tank bag that I made, top two bag. I have a bunch of these clips, which are great for marking trails. Clip it onto bushes and trees. And one other thing I'd like to show you on this bike that I really love is this light here. Typically, these are used for UTVs, but it's super nice on a bike because when you stop at night, where your feet are, you're gonna be able to see things like rattlesnakes or scorpions. So you don't have to worry about where your feet are when you're parked. So I really love to have that. A couple other accessories that I have is a pump right here, just in case I have a flat, but with tubeless and nice cush cores in here, I don't have any problem. This right here is my water, as well as another little one down there if I need it. All the magic happens in here. So that's the setup. Now it's getting dark as you can see. It's a beautiful sunset. And what I'm gonna be doing is heading all the way up here to the left. Those big hills are is kind of where the new trail is gonna be. So we're gonna be heading up, going all the way over there and marking trails going along this. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. By the time we get there, it's probably gonna be dark. We'll see how the video looks in the dark. But if you want to, I'm gonna skip ahead, and once we get there, I'll turn it back on and you can follow me along in the journey. All right, so this is the start of our single track for a good three or four miles. I actually built all these trails myself over the last year, and it's been a lot of fun. I'll show you right up here in about 20 seconds the sign that starts the trail. And I think it works out really nicely. It keeps the dirt bikes and stuff off of it with the hiking and biking signs. I'll check it out, it's right here. This is a one way to the left. This is a climbing hill to the right. So there it is. I like the, uh, it's Baron Square. There's like this big cement square up here. It's kind of interesting, biking and hiking. So yeah, that's something I added. I think it's super fun because when you build trails yourself, you get to see people in the community finding them and trying them out and it's really really a fun experience to be able to see people using your trails that you built so here's an example of one of these flags that are posted up on a bush you can see it's been here for like quite a long time it's a little bit sun bleached but that's what you want to do when you're starting trails to mark them out with those little flags so you can see where you're going as i'm riding over to this new section of the trail that i'd like to continue on over on this hill up here. We'll get to that in a minute, but I wanted to just touch on a point about mountain biking. This is seriously the one of the most therapeutic things you can do. Getting out of nature, having a nice exercise. And if you wanna to contribute to the community, go build trails. Obviously you need to follow the certain rules and regulations of your local area, but it's fun. Like I mentioned before, it's a lot of fun to see other people ride these trails. You can see how well worked in this one is. I built this trail as well. This is Fair and Square. Right here you can see, this is why it's called Fair and Square. There's this big square out here. It might be a little windy, sorry about that, but yeah, really interesting. It's just out here in the middle of nowhere, up on the hill. All right, here we are coming up on Valley View. This is another sign that I put up. Starting to get dark. We're gonna keep heading this way. I thought I might give you guys a couple tips along the way about trail building. So, right up here, you're faced with a big ravine. Things like this are really challenging when you're trying to build a trail. What you can do is just follow along the side hill there and eventually when you find a nice spot, you can go through the ravine. See right here, it'd be really steep and really up. So what I did, you follow along here and then you can see this trail right there. Then it goes this way and then up. So let's follow along with me. 
kind of see some ideas of how you might tackle obstacles like this when you're building trails. It's going to take a left turn. And right here is interesting. We have two options here. When you're coming the other direction, because this is a bi-directional trail, it's actually easier to take this lower trail. And this one here, you go high, and it allows you to have a nice gradual downhill into this section here. Down into this big dip, and then back up. And there we are through the ravine. So stuff like that, it's really challenging, but it's really fun once you find a nice line. Because nature, there are no straight lines in nature. Only ones that are created through animals, like cows going through bushes, or uh, obviously humans with uh, vehicles or motorcycles, things like that. So it's challenging. What I like to do is I like to look at Google Earth and look at the terrain and see if I see any natural lines. So if you can find some sort of natural lines in your area on Google Earth, you can start to see potential of bike trails before you even go out and look at it. You always have to go out and look at it in person though, because you really don't know how steep and what type of terrain you are in until you're actually looking at it in person. And here you can see there's all kinds of dips and rocks and bushes. It's not as easy to just put it out on Google Earth and then go out and ride it. You gotta, you gotta look out here with your eyes and actually see where some cool features, things that I can utilize to make a nice bike trail. So here's a nice little stopping section right by this tree. It's kind of a halfway point on this trail. I call this Valley View because as you can see, it has an amazing view. And this is a nice rest stop for a lot of people. Take a little break and keep going up on this little hill or ridge here. I'll put a, a picture right here of some of the trails that I built and talk a little bit about them for you. So as you can see, I have about three or four trails and they kind of connect with each other. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of variation between them, even though they're all in the same area. I think what you want to have in a, in a nice trail system is obviously a nice long climbing trail, something that's gradual because everyone wants to do those downhills, but you can't get to downhills unless you ride uphill or shuttle. Sometimes shuttling is not an option for where you're at, but if you can do a nice gradual climbing trail, everyone's going to love that and ride it all day because it's, it doesn't even feel like a climbing trail. And I always hear from a lot of different people that miles are a lot better than a steep grade. People will do miles all day. But climbing on steep hills are only fun for so long. You get worn out a lot quicker than you do doing long miles. So you might wonder why do you want to build a bike trail? Well, before I came out here and started building trails, all that there was was these type of trails, these big OHV trails that side by side and trucks go on but I noticed that those aren't very fun as you can tell basically gravel roads single track in my opinion is a lot more enjoyable on a mountain bike so here's a cool section just coming through this little ravine up out of the trees I'm gonna turn my light on now hopefully it's not too crazy for the camera it's going to start to get fun going down this little section here. Might not talk a lot, but it only take like 10, 20 seconds to get down this. And then we're almost to the end of this trail where we're going to start putting flags up, creating a nice climbing trail on this big hill. Let's go down this hill. Woo! There's some snow at the bottom. That was wild. All right, so now that we're here, I've caught my breath for a second after going on that trail all the way across the side hill here. I'm going to take you step by step through my process of building a trail. Hopefully I can get all the points in this video. If not, I would say make sure to subscribe. I'll be talking a lot more about this trail in specific. Going in the next few weeks and months, I'll be working on this trail. I want it to be something that is a gradual side hill climbing trail up to some nice enduro downhill with big rock drop-offs. 
So right here is where the trail ended and I go onto this nice two track here. What I'm gonna do is bend off here. I've looked at uh, Google Earth and really just looked at the hillside and tried to find good areas that I could build a trail. And then I came out here once and kind of just explored on my bike going off the track and uh, you know, just trying to see what options there are. I've checked it out and I have put a few flags down and today we're going to put some more flags down and I'll show you a couple of the obstacles that we might run into and how we're going to tackle those. Just like I talked about with the ravine back there, challenging areas but you can't just easily ride through on your bike but you got to do a lot of work to dig in and have a nice side hill. So, so just going along here, just looking with my eyes, you know, I've, I've put a little uh, flag right here on that one so you can follow the track. I might lose my trail here because there really isn't a trail, but uh, if I lose it, then maybe that means the trail that I'm following isn't the best one and I maybe should choose something else. So I'm gonna stop along the way just good spots, I think, that are kind of high high up and put these little flags here on the bushes. And that'll just give me, see right here, looks like I go up through this spot. And these things, all you really have to do with stuff like this is just take it and bend it down. And that gives you a nice big opening. It doesn't take much to build trails in some of these areas. When the dirt is wet, I'd say the best time to build trails is in the spring. It's definitely true because the dirt is soft and you can do all kinds of work. Just stepping on them and moving them, putting trails up or uh, putting flags up as you go. Here's a nice little spot through here. This is definitely kind of in the way. Just push that over. It's kind of hard to see, but just continue to do that as we make our way through this area, making sure. I like to record my rides so that I can see them on something like Strava, you know, to have a, a GPX file so you can go back and see where you went on Google Earth. Let me put another flag down. Super nice to have this tank bag just right here you can just grab it and put it. Let's keep going. Maybe clear some of this. There we go. Now this, like, just looking at this area, you could either take the right line or you could go left. I would say left is a little more gradual. That's the way we want to go. And I think what I want to do is follow this line around and go to the left of that big tree up there. It only takes a couple times riding on this soft dirt to get it to work itself in a little bit more. Let's put another one just right here. When you're coming in the daytime, it's gonna be a lot easier, but I like to live on the edge, I guess. All right, you can see it's a nice gradual line through here. Let's put another one up on this bush. This is really nice terrain because it's fairly open. I don't have to do a lot of work to get around some of these bushes. Just move them out of the way a little bit. Even pull them out of the ground sometimes. Make our way. You do have to have a little bit of endurance doing some of this. It's a little steep, a little bit soft. If you're used to riding on hard packed bike trails, this is gonna be a new experience for you. So here's an interesting one. I decided to go left here, but you could also go to the right and go around this section. I am kind of going back and forth because going this way, it's steep. We have this big bush right here. If we can push this in. All right, so kind of push that out of the way. Let me know down in the comments is this, if this is just a little bit too bright for you. I'm gonna try and come back out in the daytime another day and show off this trail so it's a little easier to see in the light. 
anytime that I'm stopping here, I'm just putting another flag up on the bush so it's easy to follow this line. I'd like to have this be a bi-directional trail so you can come from both directions. If you're making a trail, you might as well invest in having it be both directions. Come down through here, come up through this ravine. It is soft. Let's put one on this tree right here, shall we? When you're putting stuff on trees, you don't just want to leave it there. You want to break away without destroying the tree too much. It should be, I mean, it's obviously going to be fine, but give it more room to be seen so that when you're coming from both directions, you'll be able to see that flag. Otherwise, what's the point of putting it there if you can't see it? And if you're concerned about leaving all these flags up around, I will clean them up once the trail has been worked in enough. So I think with this one, we're, we could have gone left or we're gonna go right, but I'd say you don't wanna lose elevation when you're building trails if you don't have to. Try and keep the high ground and continually gradually climb rather than climbing, going down, climbing up again. You're just wasting your energy when you have to go up and down, up and down. Sometimes trails are fun that way, but I don't want this trail to be like that. So you might be asking like, how do you know when to put a flag down? Well, it really is just personal preference. I'd say put a flag down when you feel like you need it. If you don't need it, then just keep going. So here you can see a little bit there's actually a motorcycle trail that I jumped onto and started to follow that with this trail a little bit because if you can find a nice gradual trail that's made by something like a dirt bike, it can be really beneficial for the, to minimize the amount of work that you have to do. All right, this is where things get a little bit gnarly. We're gonna go down through here. It's gonna be pretty rocky. This is where you have to do a lot of work to uh, make things rideable. We want to get up through this little ravine here. But in order to do that, we probably need to move some of these rocks. I'm going to go ahead and try and do that right now, actually. See which ones. Yeah. Just like that. You move a big rock like this, and then you have a big hole to fill. That alone makes this a lot easier. Move some of these rocks that might get in the way of your crankshafts and pedals. So now that makes it pretty easy to just go on straight through. Continue on through here. We got a big rock we gotta move. Yeah, we got it. There we go. We had something that wasn't a trail instantly. Not bad. All right, and we'll continue on that line following this rock ridge. So let me show you what it looks like. So going along here, you can see moved a lot of these rocks. We have a nice little line through here. It's a little tight right here. Let's move that. You can just kick the rocks to see if they're loose. And then just follow this right along here. So let's hop on the bike and see if we can ride it. All right, here we go. Through there and up through there. That's awesome. And then we got this to deal with. I don't know how to do a line through here, probably. I don't really know, honestly. Let me move this massive rock. I'm gonna look around for a second. 
think we could come through here and then I don't see much. Let's look down around here. It would be better to come down around the hill and then up. No. Probably be best, honestly, to just move this huge rock and break this tree down eventually. Let's start by moving this one. This is going to be about the biggest behemoth rock move I've ever done. There we go. Keep going. Get out of the way. Here we go. That's better. I almost have to get up through here. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to do, but you just go for it. All right, so I want to show you how I ended up solving this issue after thinking about it for a minute off camera. As you can see, it's a lot different now. <laughs> I, was, I came up to this point and I'm like, do I go this way? Do I go straight up? But actually, what I ended up doing is breaking a few of these branches and making a nice little alleyway. Now this totally redefines this trail and makes it really interesting and unique because you're going through this little um, valley here between this rock and all these trees so it's really cool you come through here under this tree and then you're following this ridge on the left which is nice flat it gives you a little bit of a break and then we can continue on going straight up this way and I'll walk you straight through look how cool these rocks are there's there's some fun drops that you can do coming down this so follow this ridge here Coming all the way along. I'll ride this on the bike as well here in a second, but come all the way along. And we cleared out a bunch of rocks. That massive rock right there we cleared out. All these, smooth this out. Keep coming, coming along here. Look how much trail we just finished just by following this natural ridge. Follow this, don't hit your shin on that right there, but that makes that's what makes it fun. Come up around go that way so really an interesting little line here that makes this this trail pretty unique to the area I'm glad I found this this is gonna be a lot of fun all right let's get back on the bike and try this out from the beginning to end All right, I want to show one more section that I just finished improving, coming up straight through these rocks. It's going to be pretty difficult, especially as a first pass. I haven't tried this yet. We'll see how this goes. I'll hit my pedal there, but we made it up. It comes up through all those rocks there. It's pretty tight, but it's a lot of fun. All right, it's getting pretty dark, and I think at this point the uh, the light is a little bit too intense for the camera. So I'm gonna probably call it a day soon on this video, but I want to show you a couple more points here that I want to make. So uh, that's my little setup. Love it. Here's my light that I have on my helmet, so you can look around if you want to. But uh, stuff like this is uh, actually really beneficial for a mountain bike trail because. If you have, oh, there's some cool cactuses. There's even, uh, <laughs> there's a couple caterpillars up in those wheat, in those needles. But uh, stuff like this is really cool to try and integrate into your bike trail because if you have pretty similar terrain throughout most of it, it's fun to have some differentiation in uh, the terrain. So you can have kind of a fun little challenge with your friends as you're going along. You can take it up high and come down this if you want to. Or you're going this way you can climb up stuff in different spots 
So it's a lot of fun because stuff like this makes the trail memorable. It makes it unique. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna be making another one in the daytime. In the future, we can work on some other things, bring some tools out. You can follow me along on the experience. I wanna know from you guys what you guys think of building bike trails. Have you built bike trails yourselves? Or is it something you're looking to do? Let me know down in the, in the comments. And I'll make sure to get to those as quickly as I can after I post this video. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.